Los Angeles, rain. It creates a torrent. Concrete culverts and river bottoms become a downstream sluice of fast-moving water racing for the Pacific Ocean. Tons of debris, much of it fast food containers, flushed out by the storm, pose a challenge for foraging birds and humans. To deal with urban trash in Southern California's concrete river system, there is a channel boom in a place called Bayona Creek to sequester debris for public works removal. In the LA River, the county deployed a containment system. This debris removal operation is contracted out to the tune of over a half million dollars per year. Meanwhile, on the eastern side of Long Beach, in the San Gabriel River watershed, there is no commercial containment boom. Here, the trash is controlled by a volunteer watershed steward, demonstrating the power of one person to make a difference. I'm here at the Cerritos Bahia Marina. We're going to be talking with Lenny Arkenstall, the watershed steward here, who over a 15-year period has removed hundreds of tons of trash from this area. In 1992, I moved aboard my boat here in the Cerritos Bahia Marina. Across the channel, I saw a large body of water. I was curious of what it was, so I went into my work skiff with my dog, and we went over there, and we noticed the whole place was trashed out. And as I removed the debris, I noticed all these plants were springing up. Uh, the next day, I went back out there, and the areas that I cleaned were full of all these shorebirds. So I decided to continue this. You might say Lenny is a trash wrangler who cleans watersheds as part of his lifestyle. Lenny understands just how to employ the natural cycles of tidal flows in conjunction with the local power plant intake system to sequester trash flushed out during these rain episodes. Here, we can see about four to five tons of trash corralled by Lenny after the very first storm. Over here we have a tree. You can see the uprooted vegetation from the first runoff that usually occurs. Lumber and lots of plastic. The new debris field is pulled by currents into Lenny's boom system, but must be wrangled or contained. Within the trash are some of the items that Lenny pays particular attention to. Okay, something really important to consider is the yellows and the reds of plastic should be removed from the debris field because when it breaks down out in the ocean and all the plastics land up on the beach, there is no reds and yellows, and researchers consider that because of the color, it mimics the food sources for the birds, the sea turtles, and the fishes. Hey, look what I found. Red plastic, a gas container. It's perfect, I need one. So I'm gonna recycle this and use it. We haul off the trash to the recyclable place. We pull out the balls for the kids that lose them and we return it to the schools. A few days after storm number two, and he goes to check the booms he deployed near the power plant.
there's a whole new matter of trash that needs wrangling. To do this, Lenny simply expands his boom system, working from his skiff. Once the trash is controlled, Lenny can call Public Works for their vacuum truck, which has the capacity to remove multiple tons of trash. Well, as you just saw, we uh, got four or 5,000 pounds of trash out of the Cerritos Channel from this last storm. What's different from this storm compared to the last storm we had last month was uh, less vegetation in this storm, more plastics and paper. The difference on this storm that I've noticed is I expected a, a ton of debris, I mean lots of debris. And I was really surprised with the amount of rain that we got that we didn't have a lot of trash compared to other years. And I have to think that the efforts of the municipalities in this city of Long Beach working with their storm drain systems uh, putting inserts in there and protecting the debris from getting into the storm drains has made a difference and uh, not only on the surface of the water but below the water I'm not seeing the debris that I'm used to seeing. This, uh, another problem here we have is debris in the water affects uh, all our recreational boats here in one of the largest municipal harbors in the country here in Long Beach but all anywhere in Southern California uh, plastics you know, foul the props as we have right here. You know, get some organics there. Uh, plastic uh, can break. You know, you can break down and have a catastrophe with a boat dead in the water. Not only does it take large pieces of plastic, but the smallest pieces can block the sea intake on the cooling system of a boat, cause it to overheat, and there has been fire caused by it. This is another problem with stormwater debris in our, as far as recreation goes, it just ruins it for the boaters. Well, as you can see, there's a couple of tons of debris here. Lenny has done a good job corralling it and sequestering it. Today's the day when the uh, public works truck is gonna come and remove this debris and take it to the landfill. The truck arrives and the crew confers with Lenny about the procedure. It will take several hours to remove the trash. The vacuum system often clogs and is solved by a few wax from a shovel. It's a slow but effective process. Public Works does their job well, and soon all this urban trash will be off to the landfill instead of drifting out into the Pacific Ocean. With Public Works on site, Lenny can now turn his attention to the Los Cerritos wetlands for the trash that has migrated there. Now you can see all these banks are what I'm gonna do. I dip net all that. And I just work my way along the banks. What I've learned over the years is that it's better to come in and work with the tide cycles and get in the high tide so you're not walking on the vegetation. And it's coming upon nesting season and I want to get my little spring clean, as I call it, done so the birds can have their little babies and fly around without dealing with all this trash. It is a competitor for habitat. I call this like an armpit. And what happens is uh, I clean it and then after a few tide cycles, all the debris around the wetlands ends up back here, likes to collect here. So just by maintaining duck pond here, 
uh, you clean the whole wetlands without going all over the place. Like I say, I don't like chasing trash. I like to get it where it, it collects. What helps me keep the uh, salt marshes clean here in Alameda's Bay is the power plant. The uh, power plant cycles all the water at Alameda's Bay for its cooling system and along comes the debris and what I do is I put the booms out there to, to corral the debris and you have to time it right. Uh, the power plant, if it's up and operational, three to four hours before the high tide as the debris lifts off the banks and floating in the water, it makes its way down the channel to the power plant. Uh, ideal, ideal situation, and all the debris is collected at the, our containment boom, and then we bring in another boom, corral it, and contain it for collection. But in previous years, we've gotten up to 145,000 pounds out of Alameda's Bay uh, by doing that system with the uh, power plant. What a great way to start my day. It's all positive and uh, you just feel good. So my whole day is gonna be great. All because I was out there in the marsh this morning. Again, it's been over 15 years. I can't get enough of it. And uh, I will continue this probably until I'm an old, old man. It seems to me that the entire process has helped Lenny as much as he has helped the habitat. And Lenny's dedication is of value to all of us.